Hi, I'm Monsignor Jamie, and on our next episode of Breaking Bread, I have a veteran turned firefighter turned chef. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Monsignor Jamie, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Bread. Today we have a special guest with us, Josh Gallo. Josh, welcome. Good morning. Thank you, you for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Now, you are a veteran. Yes. You are a veteran. Correct. Firefighter for 18 years. That's correct. And also you're a chef. I try. So what profession do you like the most? Uh, <laughs> and a father. I'm glad that I serve this country. Okay. Uh, but I love, I love being a fireman. Okay. I love being now you served for four years. Where did you serve? I started out as a combat medic, and uh, I went through the healthcare system through the army. I did a uh, hurricane, Mitch. I was uh, stationed okay. in Guatemala for a bit, and then I was over in Bosnia for a bit wow, as Bosnia well. Bosnia must have been rough. Huh? It was rough. Right. Bosnia, yeah. Do you make some good friends, and you know, in... you always make friends along the way. Yeah, you still one, keep in touch with them. One of my closest friends. He is the godfather to my daughter. And I am the godfather to his daughter. We met in boot camp. Still That's friends. That's great. That's yeah. great. And then you came home, and then uh, you joined the NYFD. Uh, came home. Uh, I was uh, supposed to become a fireman. I turned it down. My wife asked me. My life was already such a uh, unraveled in, in combat and in danger. She says, "Do you really become a fireman?" And I turned it down. 9/11 uh, happened. Okay. And uh, I was there, not as a fireman, and it was like a calling. So I had to, I had to shoes to fill. Now, were you working there at 9-11? I was helping surgery in a hospital. Okay. And uh, we were part of a, a recovery team for the army that anything happens major in the city, you respond right away. What hospital were you at? I was at Winthrop University Hospital. Okay. On 9-11. Wow. Wow. I got into my car, drove straight because the highway were closed. I was, yes. in, I was in scrubs. Cops let me through. Right. They escorted me down there. I had, you know, morphine, bone cutting stuff. I had I equipment and there was nothing there. I know. So. I was there that day too. I had gone down and uh, working with the police, and you know we went down there expecting bodies. I went to Beekman Downtown Hospital. Yeah, yeah. We had a triage center set up, and yeah. and we just waited and waited, and no one came. You know it was yeah. a horrible time, and you know it's 18 years already. Can you believe that? Years. But you know it's amazing because um, that event really obviously changed so many people's lives. But it also inspired people. It did. It inspired people to go into the profession of helping people, caring for people. You know, how many firefighters that died that day, their children right. became firefighters. This year is the biggest class yes. of uh, children. children. Right. Well, they're turning 18, you know, right. they were babies at the time. And, yeah. you know, they want to walk in their, their father's or mother's footsteps, to, right. you know, to really care for people. And that's a wonderful thing, you know. You know, you say, how can good things come out of bad things? But sometimes it makes people respect life and see life in a different light. That's a great point. So it's good, and I'm glad that it happened with you also. Thank you. And Thank so you. you were inspired to go into the fire department? I had to. I wow. had to. It was a calling. I, ha I had to do it. Wow. And I haven't turned back uh, since. It's the greatest thing I've ever did. That's great. So you're 18 years in the firehouse. Yep. And now I know because I've been around, I always go in every parish I'm in, I go to different firehouses. And every time I go, Father Jamie, Monsignor Jamie, come on, we're cooking, we're cooking, come right. and eat. Awesome. And you know, since I like to cook, I was, you know, it was always great. I know when I was in Bay Ridge, Mill Basin, I always go in the firehouse and have lunch, dinner with them. And, but we live there. Yeah, I know. You're there 24 right. hours. Exactly. We have to eat. Yeah, exactly. And it's like a family, a community there. It, it is part of the culture. Right. Sit down and eat. But the Bigger part is who's cooking and who's helping and what right. are we doing? Well, it, it bonds people together. Right. That's what you know. Breaking bread is all about really? bringing people together, bringing families together, spending quality time, building relationships, bonding. Yes, and that's all great. So we're gonna take a break, and okay. when we get back, you're gonna tell me a couple of the dishes you cook in the firehouse. Fantastic. Make sure you don't go away, and Josh will be here. And he's gonna prepare some firehouse delights. Hi, welcome back to Breaking Bread, and today we have NYFD firefighter Josh Gallo. And uh, I know that firefighters always like to cook. Now, is it that they like to eat? That's why they cook? I or they like to cook and they I, eat? I think we like to eat. <laughs> okay. So we cook so we can eat. That's great. That's yeah. great. Does every firehouse 
have a cook that's of, designated? Of or, course. Uh, <laughs> Who doesn't? Is there tryouts or anything? Or? The junior guy or the probie has his first year. Okay. We give him a time limit. Say, listen, you will have your first meal on this date. Okay. Prepare. And most likely you're cooking for 11. Okay, 11 Sometimes guys. five for, this, for the single engines or single okay. trucks, but you're cooking for 11. Where did you learn to cook? Well, my family's uh, from Italy. Okay. And they went to Argentina. Okay. So they mixed a little of Italian and, right. and Argentinian cooking. Right. And uh, we've developed some good stuff. But I watch a lot of shows. I steal a lot of recipes. Yeah. Me I'm too. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Me too. You know? <laughs> yeah. I change one or two ingredients and call it mine. <laughs> I was in Milan in uh, last year in February, and this uh, older lady made some uh, polenta. First time I had it, I couldn't believe how amazing it was. Wow. So I asked her, she took me to the kitchen, how she made it. It's all about time yeah. and, and measurement. It's and all little of this, little of that, right? <laughs> it, it, it took me a year to figure out that it's so easy to mess up. Okay, so now what are you gonna prepare for us today? Today I'm making some oregano chicken with polenta okay. on the side. All right. What I like to do, I like to uh, take some chicken thighs, mm -hmm. boneless, and I do a little salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. And Get then the I, I go ahead and, and I already wash my hands, of course. Okay, definitely. We're very big on that. And 11 guys are working together, no one can get sick, so. Okay, so you just dredge that in the you flour? stay out of the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> you don't so, want to get everyone sick. I do a little flour on this. Okay. And I have my pan with olive oil, of course. Okay. Heat it up. Okay. And then we go ahead and pan fry it. Okay. So you dredge this in the flour? Yes. Okay. And I have a little olive oil in my pan here. Okay. And we start. We like to cook to music, obviously. Okay. Uh, we like to outdo each other in cooking, obviously. So Costumes are a must. I was just gonna say, is that the reason you're wearing this fancy jacket? Uh, I'm sure you don't wear this to fires. No, <laughs> no, no. Uh, I was in Vietnam, traveling in Vietnam. I bought the jacket. I went straight from the airport to the firehouse I was cooking. In between cooking, I said, you gotta see this outfit I got. And that's, that's how I <laughs> so started. So you purchased this in Vietnam? Correct. Oh my Seven dollars. Seven dollars. I saw that in Macy's for like uh, maybe hundred and seventy dollars. <laughs> Suckers. <laughs> Fantastic. If you wore this jacket in battle, I think the enemy would have ran. They would have left. <laughs> or they would have loved it. Uh, so now, what does your wife say about this? My wife is very tolerant to my uh, outrageous behaviors. Okay. Yeah. I'm she, sure she, she is. <laughs> she's endured some, some fun ones. Well, let's turn this over. Okay. So now you brown this? Yes. I'll brown this and I'll use the same pan to continue the second part of that. Oh, okay. So you make the polenta right in, in the same? No, the polenta is separate. Oh, okay. I do okay. the polenta separate. What I do with polenta, I do four cups of chicken stock, half a cup of polenta, which is also called corn grits to those who don't know. Exactly, that was a peasant's dish. Correct. And then all now it's a delicacy. It's a delicacy. <laughs> and you can make you it good and you can make it in a restaurant. Polenta. Absolutely. You have to stir it every five minutes. Yes. Simmer, covered. Yes. If not, if you go seven minutes, eight minutes, it's done. It's, it, it's a mess. I like to put it on another plate because I will take that and I'll use that same pan. Okay, we'll put it right on here. Okay. So like I was saying before, we have designated helpers right. for the meal. If I'm the captain of the meal tonight, the other nine guys, 10 guys will help me. They will cut for me. They will... Um, Who does the shopping? Because that's... We important. all do it together. You do it together. We all do it together. Because cooking has to know what you need, right? First guy that says something, well... Oh, thank you. You're welcome. First guy that says what he wants to cook is cooking it. Okay. So, let's go with my onions. Okay. So you have the flavor of the chicken already in there. Absolutely. In the oil. And we have our chopped garlic. Okay. Smells strong. Yes. We have some salt. And we have our pepper. Okay. Okay. And I will get my wooden spoon. Yes. We have one right over here. Fantastic. Always the wooden spoon. Yeah. You don't want to scrape the pan. Oh. Mama wouldn't like it. 
It's amazing how olive oil, garlic, and onions, the flavors just, you know, merge together. What You're a, right. What a smell. It, what a smell. <laughs> what a smell. Brings back the memories of Sunday morning, waking up and mom is cooking yeah. the sauce and the gravy and the meatballs yeah. and you smell the garlic and the onions. Sauteed. That's starting to look good there. One okay. thing I forgot to tell you that before we, we cook, okay. we have a nosh. Okay. So I got some sopraceta today. Okay. We like to cut it up. So the guys who are helping and cooking, when they go from one task to the other, they can They're picking, start, right? start picking. Right. All right. Very nice. Can we taste nice. a little bit? Oh, of course. Good. Absolutely, yeah, please. Good. Take a little. Mm. That's good. I'm Very sure good. You gotta take off. I leave the, the casing skin. on, I cut it. This way, they can Very take good. it off if they want. Very nice. Very nice. That's why a lot of times, by the time you sit down and eat, if you're cooking, you're full already. Yes. You're cooking this, this, that. Yes. It's nice. Very nice. It's not too sharp. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna take some tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna start there. Okay, that, that's just crushed tomatoes? That's just crushed tomatoes. Okay. And here's where we start doing the costume changes. Oh, okay. Yep, I will remove the jacket. Sometimes you I'll don't want to get dirty, hat. right? Can't get it I dirty. Because I'll get it It'll cost you thousand dollars to fly back there to buy that seven dollar jacket. <laughs> I got a cheap flight that time. I got a cheap flight. Get that in there. Now we're gonna have some cooking wine. Okay. White wine. It's a little sweet. A little bit to get. Some nice stuff going in there. I like to add some. Fresh tomato? Fresh tomatoes. You could use diced in a can, but why? Uh, nothing like fresh. Make it nice. You know, make it nice. Make it a nice, a spicy meatball. Make meatful. it nice and spicy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So let that simmer for a little bit. Um, and now you're gonna Put the chicken back in the same I put the chicken back in oh, there. Okay. Yep. And I'll finish cooking it. it will finish cooking it. And we let that simmer for a bit. So let's put that chicken back in there. Now, where did this recipe come from? This one is uh, two stolen recipes. Merged together. Merged together. Okay. And I tried it out, and it was a big hit. And I did it again, and it was a bigger hit. Now, once a month, it's a requested plate. A regular chicken and polenta has to be done. And that's what's has good about cooking. Done. You can put whatever you want in. You can mix things together and you can do whatever, whatever you, you like. Because there's certain things I don't like, I just don't put it in the recipe. Correct. <laughs> Correct. And then I substitute and it comes out better than the original oh, recipe. Try and error. So I have some capers here. And I'm gonna drain I, these capers. I don't like capers, but really? put them in. I would eliminate capers, but that's okay. I'm very disappointed now. Yeah. See, I would have put mushrooms in. Really? Only because I don't like capers. I hate olives. I love I, olive oil. I don't oil. like olives either. Really? I'll give but up I all government secrets. I love olive secrets. oil. I love olive oil. You can kidnap me. I will give up government secrets. Okay. <laughs> so we'll just do one today. Okay. For the capers. We'll do some capers here. Instead of two. Move this around a little bit. But the capers do have a nice flavor to them. They it do. Add to the it, dish. it does add. And when you simmer this for 20 minutes, at the end, then you cover it. It kind of gets absorbed. You don't right. feel the, the strong caper uh, taste, but it is fabulous. I also have some fresh basil, mm -hmm. which I like to chop up in my hands. Just break just, it apart. Just break it apart. Yeah. I love the smell of it. Yeah. Like I said, I love fresh basil. It's amazing, almost as amazing as my hair. <laughs> In the now, middle of cooking, sometimes we like to... You can to... put basil on anything. Oh, I mean, it's just... You're right. Fresh you can pasta. put on anything. Ah. And then here is where we throw in some oregano. Okay. Gives it that nice, bold taste. I'm a heavy oregano guy. Okay. And let's do a little flippy flop. So one of the problems that we have is, uh, obviously, in cooking is having runs in between the cooking. Right, now what happens if the alarm goes off and the bells go off and you have to go to a fire? You shut everything down. Everything down. Everything down, 
and that's where the chaos comes in. Right. Because you come back, your hair is all messed up, right. your costumes are a disarray, <laughs> and you don't know what happened. You don't know what, what stage you're at. And if one company comes back before the other one, and you're cooking, they don't know what you're doing. Right. They just chop for you. <laughs> I also have here some peeled lemons. Lemons? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Makes it very interesting here. So that'll give it a little bit of a pungent taste. Correct. Yeah. I really think that, that basil, that lemon, that oregano, and those capers fuse together. They contrast each other. It, it makes magic. Yeah. It makes a little magic. So I like to cover this up about eight minutes and let it simmer, let it okay. infuse. And at this time is where we start the polenta and, okay. uh, like I said, four cups of chicken stock and half a cup of polenta. And you have to keep stirring keep it on stirring a low it. flame. and Then a little butter at the right. end. And then we take our Parmesan cheese. Right. And you put that right on top. Okay. And we like to... The Parmesan in the polenta is magic. Oh. It's magic. Now, do the firefighters take anything home? No. <laughs> do no. they take it home to their wives and say, look what I made, honey? It's an unwritten <laughs> rule. You don't take food home. It stays in the kitchen because tomorrow, the next crew comes in. Right. They relieve you. They're hungry. Maybe so they're working their side jobs. Maybe they were picking the kids at school. They didn't have time to have lunch. They get in to relieve us, open the fridge, and they had oregano chicken from last night. And, you know, they'll text me and tell me how amazing I am. <laughs> How long when you work? I mean, you work like 36 hours, 48 hours at a time, and then you're off for? 24 hours is the 24. limit. 24, okay. And then you have one day or two days off, and you come back for another 24. All right. So we're doing two 24s a week. Okay. We're gonna take a break, and when we get back, we'll taste some of this, okay? Fantastic. Don't go away when we get back. Josh is gonna let us taste some of his wonderful firehouse special. Hi, welcome back to Breaking Bread. I'm Monsignor Jamie. You like my jacket? This is Fashion Week here on Breaking Bread. Josh, where's your jacket? Well, at the end of the meal, I like to put on my finishing scarf. Your formal wear. My formal wear. <laughs> and then we serve uh, the members. Well, I didn't want you to upstage me, so that I went That is out. amazing. I went to find this jacket I had about 30 years ago. In fact, Fabulous. it can't even button. Well, <laughs> you don't want it open. You know, that's nice. That looks good. That looks nice. Anyway, so now yeah. tell me, you're going to finish this dish off? Yes. So. This is the polenta? This is the polenta. Okay. Got a little Parmesan cheese in there. What I like to do, I like to do a little bed. I'll do a little okay. bed of polenta. All right. A queen size or a king size? It depends. Okay. We like to- Firefighters, they eat a lot. We serve your own. <laughs> so oh, everything's okay. set up. We tell them how to serve it, and the guys do it themselves. All the firehouses do different stuff. Okay. I think it's dis disrespectful to not finish the plate. So when a firehouse fills your plate up, you have to eat it. Right, exactly. So we, we voted on it, and we said we are going to... Everyone helps themselves. Look at A this. little sauce on top? That a little looks sauce good. on top. Okay. Let's do the other plate. That looks good. Oh, the polenta's nice. What are some of the other dishes in the firehouse? My other signature dish is paella. Paella is good. I went to Spain. So that would be uh, the Spanish or the uh, Argentine? Yes. I went to Spain for... A month okay. right after high school, and uh, the people I was living with, that my mom sent me to, made paella every other day, and it was absolutely delicious, amazing, and uh, I've made it ever since. There aren't too many restaurants here in the city that have it that really makes it like Correct. In Spain. Correct, the right way. Yes, the right way. I remember when I went to uh, Fatima. Uh -huh. And then we went to some of the restaurants in uh, Spain and Portugal, and it was just beautiful. I mean the. Beautiful. The paella, I think we had it almost every day. I think we have we, to. I think we had it for breakfast one day. We got out yeah. to a late start, we were on the road in the bus, and it was like, you know, 9.30 or 10 o'clock in the morning, we were eating paella on the road oh, that's <laughs> for great. breakfast. That's great. They're different versions, too. They're very yes. different versions. You must have done a lot of traveling in the service as well. I did. Uh, there were a lot more opportunities I could have had, but I was always studying, and uh, the cool kids went to Korea, they were stationed in Japan, Italy. Okay. So when I got out of the service, I, that's what I did. 
Does your wife come with you? you she loves traveling. That's great. Uh, she's a speech pathologist for okay. the Board of Ed. So she has certain times that she can travel, which right. is usually the most expensive times. But February breaks, uh, April breaks, we go, and summer breaks, we do long vacations. Oh, that's great. Yeah. The kids like it. I'm kids sure. love it. My, my kids have been to Cuba, Vietnam, uh, Indonesia, wow. Thailand, Amsterdam, Germany. They love traveling. Yes. Now, let's taste this. Go ahead. Tell me what you think. I'm going to have some, too. Mm. That's nice. That's very good. And I, I taste the lemon. Yes. The lemon in there. A little lemon. Mmm. I'm amazing. And it's so moist. Look I don't know how I do it. Is. It's very moist. Perfect. Excellent. That polenta is out of this world. So tell me, I, you told me you had a little polenta story. Polenta has to be stirred every five minutes. If not, it makes this big ball and you right. can't you know, get around it. Well, we had a run. We had the polenta in 20 minutes. We had 10 more minutes to go. That's two more stirrings. We have a neighbor that... Uh, at the firehouse. At the firehouse. She walks her dog all the time. She's friends with us for years. Older lady. And I don't think she can cook. We asked her to do a five minute stir every, uh, every few minutes. While you were out on the While run. While we were on the run. <laughs> and she came upstairs, she did it, and she had set up some plates for us. Amazing. I hope she ate with you. No, she, uh -huh. she, she, she felt imposed, but we always send her little packages and stuff for her. That's great. Yeah. Those are the friends you need around the firehouse. Yes. House. That's great. Yes. That's good. So tell me, I noticed these bracelets that you have on. Where'd you get those? Uh, in my travels, one of the things I get to pick up are, are bracelets. And this is a rosary one, This right? is a rosary one. This I okay. got this in Milan, uh, Il Duomo. Okay. Amazing. Beautiful. Amazing, yeah. amazing place. Yes. Uh, it's gorgeous. And the gallery is right across the it street. It is, right. Yeah. It, was, uh, it gave us a tour. Right. And uh, we had services there. Beautiful. And I, I picked this up uh, along the way. And the other one is... And the a... other one, I got this in Cambodia. Okay. We went to uh, a monk's chanting ceremony. One of the monasteries one there. One of the monasteries. And That's I beautiful. always pick up a religious item along my travels. Great. Churches and monasteries and temples are, are beautiful throughout the world, yeah. Well, Josh, thank you not only for your recipes and your service, but thank you for bringing a little fashion oh, to our oh. show on Breaking Bread. Oh, please. Maybe you started a new trend. Oh, you know. <laughs> Now tell me, what do you like most about being a firefighter? You know, it's rewarding. Mm -hmm. uh, you can say you help somebody once, or you can help somebody save a life, or you've done something to, to help somebody get to the next day. Right, right. It's rewarding. That's great, that's great. Yeah. You know, I know uh, Danny Nigro, the commissioner. Great man. He is a great commissioner. Great he's doing a great job. And, you know, he's been doing some tough stuff. You know, a lot, so many men have died from September 11th yeah. illnesses. And, uh, you know, keeping the fire department together and with all the, you know, that's going on today. And uh, we have a great leader there. So. He's an icon in the, yeah. in the fire department. As a matter of fact, he was in my battalion when, uh, probably 30, 35 years ago when he was right. coming up through the ranks. He's a strong man. We love him. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah, and he's into fashion. Have you seen his outfits? Oh, yeah. He, <laughs> he's always making speeches, always he going loves around. He his and, fashion. Yeah. yeah, he knows what he's doing. So that, that, that's great. That's, that's wonderful. But I, I want to thank you for being here today. And first of all, I thank you for your service to our country. I appreciate it. You know, because, uh, you know, a lot of times we take that for granted. Our freedom, we take the servicemen that are, you know, over there protecting our borders, protecting, you know, keeping peace throughout the world yeah. so that we can live in peace and harmony with everyone in the world. Yeah. And I also thank you for your service to our city, protecting, you. you know, going in when people are running out and away from danger, you guys are running in thank to you. help. Well, we thank you too. You, uh, uh, when we need help, we try. We, we, yes, we try. We look, we look to you, so I we, appreciate what you have done as well. We try to be there, and I'm always available, like for the police department, fire department, you know, always there for them. Why don't Great. we end with a prayer? Let's do okay? that. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we come together in the spirit of thanksgiving. Today we are thankful for the life of Josh Gallo, for his service to our country, to his service to the FDNY, and for all that he does to protect our city. We ask you, Lord, today to watch over all of our armed forces who are stationed throughout the world, keeping peace. We ask you, Lord, to help us all to respect one another. We pray that the nations and peoples and religions of the world would come to have a greater respect and cooperation among each other. We ask you, Lord, to bless all that we do in your holy name. Through Christ our Lord, amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.
Amen. Josh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, uh, is it okay if I come and visit? Of course. All right. Um, We're right, right over the bridge. Right over the bridge. You Please. call me and uh, I, I promise you, if you guys get a call and you go out to a fire, I won't eat all the food. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much and uh, thank, thank you so all much. the guys. I appreciate too, it. Right? I hope you enjoyed it. I did. Thank you for watching this episode of Breaking Bread. I hope you enjoyed it. The recipe is available for you. Make sure you watch the next one. See you then.